How well do you remember 1959? How many St. Mary's fans remember 1959? It was the last time the gals reached the regional finals, but they only had to win one game to get there. Oh, 51 years ago. Hey, how are you folks? Jason Horowitz, glad to be alongside MSG Network and Compass Media College basketball insider John Rostin with you on your previews presented by State Farm. Trying to win their third game here in the NCAA tournament up against Baylor. And John, the biggest name with Ali Farukmanesh that we've become accustomed to in this tournament, that has been Omar Samhan. Omar Samhan's been absolutely terrific throughout the first rounds of the NCAA tournament, but he will be going up against a different beast in the Sweet 16 because Baylor, unlike Richmond and unlike Villanova, very very, very talented, very long across the baseline. And one of those parts is Epe Udo, who in the first round had 20 points, 13 rebounds, didn't have as good of a game in the second round. They didn't need him to do that. His contribution to this ball game has to be what? It has to be a player that can deflect shots in the middle. But conversely, Baylor found a pretty good offensive option in Josh Lomers against Old Dominion. Jason, I'm real curious to see if Scott Drew will try and get Josh Lomers some opportunities on the offensive side of the basketball floor to get Omar Samhan in trouble. If St. Mary's doesn't have Omar Samhan on the court, they have no chance against Baylor. You know, the other part too for Baylor, one of the reasons Lomers was so successful in that second Around win against Old Dominion was because Lace Darius Dunn was what you'd expect from Lace Darius Dunn, and Tweedy Carter was very good. Complete turnaround mm -hmm. from the first round against San Houston State. What are you expecting from them in this game? Well, they're home. They're going to Houston. They're going to be a lot more comfortable. And even though Lace Darius Dunn was better offensively in their second round win over Old Dominion, we still have not seen the best out of Tweedy Carter. So this Baylor backcourt, which is a backcourt that I believe is one of the more underrated ones in college basketball, still has not played its best basketball. If those two are clicking, Carter and none in the backcourt. Baylor has a great chance to advance to a regional final. Yeah, on the other side, though, St. Mary's, you know, we talk about Omar Samhan, but you have to give credit and plenty of it to a man named Mickey McConnell who's been hitting huge shots <laughs> since the West Coast Conference Tournament uh, where he just hammered Gonzaga in the finals. Been nailing shots, but how will the length affect him in this ball game? Well, it's going to be a big problem for him because that 2-3 zone that Baylor plays is extended, especially at the wing positions. So Mickey McConnell dealt with a lot of smaller guards against Villanova. Now, Corey Fisher and Malik Waynes, very quick, very deceptively quick, but at the same time, he didn't deal with the width and the girth that he's going to deal with against Baylor. I really think Baylor's a tough matchup for St. Mary's, and like I said, they're home. They're three and a half hours away from campus. A very, this very different story for St. Mary's, because none of these kids are home. Five of the guys on this team from Australia, though Omar Samman, one of the ones that's not, well, he said his mom didn't even go to the first two rounds. She had already booked her ticket for Houston. She'll get to see him up against Baylor. Is she going to get to see him not off Baylor. No, I don't think so. I think Baylor is ready and made to win this basketball game against St. Mary's, putting them one step closer to the Final Four. All right, we'll see how it all plays out on Friday night in Houston. For John Rothstein, I'm Jason Horowitz. Take care, folks.